Hello everyone and thank you for joining us in this tutorial where we will share with you our experiment with producing a cinematic animation using Lumen and Path Trace and which one is suitable based on your workflow and your production time. So let's get started. So we'll start in Blender by sharing with you our workflow for modeling the bathroom elements of the NG project as we have chosen to use it as an example for our course too. Now the idea here is that we want to model everything from scratch because we want to give more attention to our polygon counts and the UVs. Now you could however use a ready-made model that are available for free but if you face any problems with the UVs then you definitely have to remodel that part or delete some of the object parts and remodel it again which could actually consume more time than modeling this from scratch. The other thing is having the experience to model your objects from scratch by yourself is being able to create a clean and organized UVs that will help you achieve more realism for your Unreal real-time project. However, if your job as a 3D artist require you to produce still images or a quick cinematic for the project concept, regardless of your object content inside that project, ready-made objects that are available for free could be your choice in this case. For personal objects that most of us would would be able to create on their free time for example to achieve a specific target we want to reach to having good modeling skills help you a lot to get better result now we also know that today with ai development moving very fast we have seen a few posts all around showing application and its early stage helping artists creating 3D objects by just typing a few prompt and moving to the next stage rather than starting from the beginning. Now we don't know actually how this will look like if we start for example exporting this to a texturing application such as Mixer and start adding details with materials not sure how this is gonna look like, but I guess this is why you should equip yourself with a few modeling techniques and skills along the way. So for this project, as we're trying, for example, to showcase the use of Unreal Engine for ArcVis, the modeling of these elements also help us face a lot of job challenges that we see today. Whether, for example, in a game development company, architectural company, or even furniture design companies. You could face a task that your direct supervisor, for example, or your design team require a specific type of furniture, for example, to be included in the real-time project. And this is where you have to model everything from scratch as well. One thing that also may be familiar that most of us are hearing today is that maybe some artists that are still in their early stage of their career, they will start trying to skip some of the learning path such as modeling because of the development of the AI applications. Debating that, why the need to learn such as this modeling techniques or coding techniques actually, or even coding language, if AI already trying now help us move things, move with our task much faster. But to answer that is, you have to look at the whole picture. AI is being built to help you speed up the process that you're already working on. So 
it could help you actually build, give you a base model, for example, if for the debate of this subject, that you can use it to continue modeling at it, on it or adding more details on it. And it also can help you reach to a concept, for example. But I'm not sure if we can count on it 100% without the need of any skills that we need to learn. So in summary, at the end of the day, it's a decision everyone have to make to be able to build his career. Also, it's worth mentioning that even with the fast development AI application, you always hear people are talking, you either surf with the wave or you'll be left behind. So this is true, but surfing without a base knowledge, even just basic stuff, can this be enough? Without the knowledge, for example, with Python basic scripting methodology, can you be able to go to ChatGPT, for example, and ask him for a Python script without any knowledge of that? Yeah, of course, we have to have at least a basic knowledge of how the coding language of the Python debate and operate. At least so when we get the code, we understand how it's built. Same thing will, will be applied to any field such as 3D visualization. Even with cloth simulation, for example, this is part of the things that I've seen many artists try to skip and just count on doing things on a, a very simple way without the need of experimenting with how cloth can actually simulate to create realistic shapes. And they end up, for example, modeling a simple shapes without the need to add any kind of simulation. But through my experience in this field, I believe acquiring lots of skills help actually achieve good results. Now, as you can see, the unwrapping process is very important for you to have, especially when you start exporting your objects to Unreal Engine. Having a clean, organized UVs enable you to send your object to Mixer and adding these layers of materials that we have learn through our previous tutorials and be able to reach to a level of reality by only a few layers of materials so what we're doing right now in this phase is that applying the checker texture help you also organize your uvs for i wouldn't say it's a complicated object but it's more as a complicated uh, a material flow on these objects because if you're going to use textures and you want to have your object ready to be microscopic through the real time for example you need to have your material organized very well on these corners you don't want to end up for example having few comments from your clients that there is a problem with the UVs of your objects. And if it's something that you haven't worked on or you haven't created by yourself, then this could be a headache that you don't want to have in your career. Of course, from a 3D Max user for almost more than 10 years, since I started using Blender, for the past three years. I've discovered that modeling and unwrapping for most of the 3D artists inside Blender is much better and more effective. 
I'm not trying to judge which is better here, but looking at the options that you can have inside your modeling software is very important. And Blender so far have proven that it is really effective for artists to help them speed their workflow and achieve high level of quality with their projects with the minimum amount of effort by using its tools. The importance of the UV, having clean UVs and your objects is more important than having clean actually polygons, which is really clear because these days you can actually see that some companies looking for UV artists who can actually create a clean and organized UVs so they can be able to texture them and achieve the realism that they are looking for. It could be strange how creating UVs is as important as even the whole modeling stage, but we all have seen that part where we finish, where we will, where once we finish our model, we think that we are done and it's fine. I'm just gonna create a simple UV by using the smart UV tool inside Blender or even an add-on and that's it. It could however work in some cases, but you will face other cases where you need to actually start dividing your object to achieve that level of correction inside your UVs. So here inside Unreal Engine, after importing our scene using Datasmith, we will apply the material the same way we applied it in our previous tutorial. Just a basic material and make sure that your textures are changeable through the instance material. You can find a link in the description for that tutorial as well. So once we apply all the materials, we'll move to the lumen and the path tracing part. So the main point of this video is to show the difference between extracting cinematic videos from Unreal Engine using lumen versus using path tracing. And this is a case where most of us will face in any kind of a job that you're on involved in using Unreal Engine. So I choose this camera angle to determine one specific point. As you can see, the middle reflection over here is shown in dark. And the main reason for that, if we go to our camera and select Lumen, we can see that we are missing one important element that Epic Games is working on to release it in Unreal Engine 5.3, which is the number of bounces. Over here we cannot see any anything that determine any bounce amount because it's only one bounce. That's why the reflection on this metallic material is shown in black. Even though if there is any objects will go behind, it is limited to the amount that it will show based on that bounces. However, looking at, for example, the bath tracing, if we choose bath tracing and inside our camera, let's choose bath tracing. Now, I'm gonna minimize the amount of the sample per pixel for the sake of this video. So I'm gonna put it, for example, to 64. And over here we can see the missing part in Lumen, which is the bounces. These bounces represent the amount of light inside that space that will enable the reflection to capture more light. So if I increase this, for example, to 15, we'll start to see more brightness on that material reflection. If I put this value, for example, to one, we'll start to see the common case of the missing amount of bounces. So hopefully this is will be fixed in Unreal Engine 5.3 and then we can determine 
which is still valid for that uh, cinematic production. Now, the second important thing is that currently this image is being smoothed out by using the denoiser. And the denoiser, as we all know, is an AI algorithm that enable the final tweaking to eliminate all the noise from the image and give you a nice look from that image. Now the denoiser the quality depend on the sample per pixel. So if we increase this for example 256 it will show more time being used to calculate the bounces and the sampling of that image and then once it, this is done it will show us the final result in the denoiser. So which one exactly should we use to reduce for a cinematic? Of course at this stage using path tracing is more relevant especially for the translucency effect. Now let's go to camera one and I'm gonna minimize this for example to 64 again specifically for the reflection and the translucency of the metal and the glass of any object like we can see here compared to lumen we'll start to see strange effect maybe in the exterior part this is not going to be a problem because most of the reflection or the metal part will not be that huge but if you have a big facade made of metallic material then this will definitely cause you a problem now the final most important point is that what is the setting for the render which how can we set up our render movie queue to extract these videos to compare them together we'll go to window cinematic and movie render queue now we have our bathroom cinematic choose here so in the setting for lumen production we're gonna use the output and the settings to determine where our renders will be saved to and keep everything as the same for the frame per second and if you want to determine how or from which frame you want to render up to how and only use the custom playback range in case you want to choose the amount of frames to be rendered from your timeline from your timeline your deferred rendering is what you're going to use to render the lumen but keep in mind because even we are using a scalability of high to minimize the amount of to reduce the quality so we can get a higher recording quality for this video it is always recommended even by epic games to activate the game override in your settings which will help you produce your video based on the cinematic quality settings without adjusting it in the background. Last thing we're gonna choose the anti-aliasing and this is basically the spatial sample count and the temporal sample count. You can start for example by a very basic amount let's say for example 32 to two temporal amount and activate the override anti-aliasing to get rid of this error. Now you can choose which one of these you can activate. Now you can choose any of the anti-aliasing methods here but none is always a common option to render your views, to render your video. And this is where you're gonna start rendering using them. So if you choose to test path tracing and see which one is much faster or more practical for your timeline, First, you're gonna need to remove, remove the deferred rendering and choose only path tracing. Now, it doesn't matter if you keep the game override or deleting it because the path tracing is actually a common because path tracing will work its own to reduce the fine quality based on your settings that you have defined. So, now, if you choose the path tracing, you need to adjust your anti-aliasing based on your settings that you have chosen. For example, if I set the sample per pixel, let's say for example for 5 by 12, 512, 
I need to divide these two amounts to match the number in the sample per pixel. So for example, if I put this to 32, I can put this for example to 60. This will match the 512 and the sample per pixel and render it. However, there is one common issue, especially for interior rendering. If the denoiser is on, every frame the path tracing will calculate the denoiser amount for that will create splatches. And by splatches, this is what we're talking about. So to avoid this problem and keep using path tracing for your render to if you have enough time to produce the frames and combine them in your video editing software, it is recommended to remove the denoiser and, and keep your values up so you can get enough information on your image and once you finish you can just do a simple denoiser in your video production and get a simple path trace render without any noise or splashes all over your videos. So hopefully this experiment help you choose which method you would like to use to produce your cinematic videos for the uh, architectural interior part. And if you have any questions, please share it down in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully to see you in the next video. Thank you.